Don't fool yourself. Deep down, they know who you are. Fern. And Violet. You're whatever the fuck I want you to be. I wasn't going for camp. I wasn't going for horror comedy. I was, I was just like playing this role and I like acted my heart out. How, when you got this script and you're reading these words on this page, how is it hitting you at the time? Oh my God, like this movie is larger than life. It's so fun. These characters are so crazy, so over the top. Our clothes, like our outfits, how they acted, like the teachers, I mean like everything. No, God, what are you doing? God, tuna much? But my mom always- We never, ever eat at lunch period. Do you understand me? Sorry. It was fun. I mean, it was really fun because, because I'm playing two roles in this movie, basically. I was always looking at it in terms of like Fern versus Violet. Yeah. Never like, oh my gosh, like what is this? Who was this character? Like, I felt like Fern was such a specific character that I understood. Uh, I wanted to know if you were gonna chaperone the Botany Club's annual garden party. I am, yes I am. Of course, I wouldn't miss that for the world. But then everything about like Fern became like different than Violet. And then when it got into Violet, it was like all that, like I had to just play like opposite of Fern. When you were becoming Fern, was there a thing that you put on where you were like, this is Fern? I mean, the wig. And certainly I relate more to being a wallflower in high school and like doing a nice thing for a stranger, like her like dropping off Liz's homework and stuff like that. Like, so something I would do for someone who like barely like gave me the time of day. <laughs> Hi Liz. Hi Liz. My name's Fern Mayo. Like hold the mayo. And so when in the inverse of that, when you're stepping into Violet. Hi Fern. I don't know a Fern. What? My name's Violet. What was the keystone? It was kind of everything. It was like the clothes and the blonde hair. It's like those like pink, it was like all pink and like cat eye sunglasses and a bow in my hair. And it was like, it was just so girly and like trying so hard to sell it. When we encounter Violet on the hood of a Corvette, what is that like filming that scene where you're on the hood of the car in this out extravagant outfit and you are just throwing your hair around? I was really stressed out because I couldn't drive the car because it was a stick shift and no one asked me if I could drive a stick shift. So like when I'm pulling into my spot, just know the reason you can't see the back of the car is because like two Teamsters are pushing the car into <laughs> my parking spot. And then the second thing that stressed me out was when I was sitting on top of that car, that like pink, uh, pink suit had rhinestones on it. And I was so afraid of scratching the paint with those rhinestones. Like I'm so my dad's daughter. And I'm like, this is such a beautiful American car. And it's like <laughs> mint. I mean, this shit was cherry. And I'm sitting on there with these like little teeny tiny like metal spikes. And so while I'm like rocking out, I'm like really trying to focus on like keeping my butt in one place and not scooching around so that I would scratch the paint. It's amazing how many things this movie did that sort of became the definitive of what they are. The beautiful girl slow walking down a high school hallway. I'll never get tired of that shot. I mean, no one loved that more than Rose McGowan. She was like the queen. How was that then like the day on set where you're getting fucking roughed up by like, you are thrown into that mirror. What the fuck are you doing? Exactly what you taught me. That was not a great day. <laughs> oh no. We're <laughs> you're like, and that is what that was, was not a great day. It was not a great day. I think all of us could have used a few more rehearsals. I knew Judy had to give it back to Rose as much as I knew that Violet had to give it back to Courtney. And I was so scared. I wasn't going to be able to match her. I've got the power. Her name's Sweet Liz, remember? Your bloated boo-boo. I'll fucking shred you, you whore. One of the most interesting things I, I read when I was reading interviews for this was Darren talking about how in, in creating Jawbreaker, he was talking about like being, being gay, growing up, being in high school. A lot of 
fans come up to me with tears in their eyes. Like I've been passed notes by people that have said like, your performance in Jawbreaker changed my life, made me see things differently, like made me feel okay. I get kind of choked up thinking about it because for a long time, like I didn't understand the, I didn't understand how important it was to the gay community and 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 to feel like you are heard or you have like representation like in a time when it was still rough to come out and that's why i think this movie continues to be beloved